Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Sunday's show here. I guess we are definitely live now. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, as usual, read the disclaimer. This is for entertainment purposes only. And that's the way it goes. If you don't like it, go back to your mom's basement and tell her to make you a sandwich. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. I am just I was just, I, someone was trying to get me last night. Oh man, I just woke up. I didn't feel so hot. So I'm really surprised I'm here right now, but I want to try and make a commitment to everybody because you guys are awesome. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do what you got to do. Um, just keep it coming because that's why we're here. So today's topic, is, well, there's quite a few topics today. Um, oh, look, we have a special guest with us. <laughs> I wonder who that could be. <laughs> and I wore my favorite t-shirt. Yeah, I wore my favorite because it reminds me of family, some family member. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> so, yeah, the... the Harry's hearing on his uh, deportation, I guess, was uh, on Friday. And uh, so nobody knows really how that went. But from what I can gather, nobody wants him back anyway. So where are they going to deport him to? If you look at all the headlines, which I do every day, you know, anybody can look at these. They're all online. Just type in Megan and Harry or Harry gets deported or whatever, or Harry's getting deported. There's thousands of them. So, but we like to go over them in, in our special kind of way. <laughs> Prince Harry warned if he's caught in a lie, he should be deported as his visa case looms. Well, Harry, you know, I put out the welcome mat once before. So if you're on the lam and you're running from the law, you could always come down to Mexico because they won't find you here. You know, and then we could always like hire, uh, get a coyote to take you back, <laughs> you know, because I, I, I know you probably have separation anxiety being away from Megan for more than eight seconds, you know, and, and how would they deport you anyway? How would they deport Harry anyway? It would take him six months to get Megan's claws out of his back. I mean, come on. <laughs> it, it's a it, it's a duo. They got to deport him both. They're like super glued at the hip. <laughs> Oh, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's having a fantastic weekend. Uh, what's left of it anyway, it's Sunday night in the UK. It's uh, Sunday morning here. And I know I feel like I'm not serving my Australian fans very well, but I'm going to do a special time on Wednesday for them, I think, now, now that I'm getting more situated. <laughs> okay, let's say hi to some people. Adriana, hi. Thank you. Thank you. Do, 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 do. Can Megan get deported? Fat chance on that one. I blame Doria. This is uh, must be abbreviated for Scottish one. Who really, uh, I blame Doria, who readily available herself to ride on Megan's coattails. Seems like that was a source of the narcissism. Yes. Yes, very good observation there. Aisha, good morning. Amanda. Best wishes for a lovely day. You too. Tanya, hi. Wonder if Megan realized when she was. <laughs> Tanya Oswald said, wonder when Megan realized she was black. Inquiring minds want to know. Megan is mixed race. So she's half dad and half Dorito. Doria, I mean, sorry. Anyway, you know, there's, 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 there's no race in my, there's no racism in my family. There never has been. There never will be. We're not, we're not racist people at all. So it's, it's just, that's just one of those topics that, you know, kind of, you know, it's on, it's on the wall there, you know, but KLG Armstrong's good evening from South England. Thank you. Amanda Richards. Hi, Megs. How's your daddy? <laughs> Since uh, Harry poked you and uh, gave you a good, you know, 
give you a good, uh, you know, I guess a really good low flying, like low blow insult because he went and saw his dad when his dad was ill. But oh, that's right, Meg, you lost your daddy a long time ago. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, uh, good news, we found him. He's okay. Fucking freak. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Z Mathis, have you noticed Megan is going from white to black? <laughs> she reminds me of this of the singer. Does it matter? Oh, does it matter if you're black or white? I don't know. I think Megan just, you know, she has uh, 50 different shades of uh, what's call it makeup that, you know, depending on the occasion. <laughs> All right, my Maisie Cats. Good evening. Good morning, Thomas. We need to hear more about the Harkles. Spill the beans. Well, that's why we come on here. I can't do it all in one day. I can't, you know, it's just going to take time. But now, really, who just tuned out? That's messed up. There was just 358 viewers. Now there's 357. Who does that? Shame on you. Oh, I'm going to listen to my way home from work. Uh, Bettina, that's something great. I should be listening on my way home from work. Anne, hi. Hi, Anne. Mm -hmm. Anna Perkins, please let it be. Magnet tonight. Chicky baby. Everybody wants chicky baby. Anyway, this this deportation thing, it's like, like I said, it, it, it's not going to work. And, I, you know, in my personal opinion, allegedly, in my opinion, or yeah, allegedly, right? This is what I think what's going to happen, what, what this deportation ploy is most likely about. I think it has a lot to do with it's Harry's way out. I think, I think, in my opinion, he probably conjured this up, got with the royal family, begged and plead. He probably sits on the phone in the chicken coop for hours crying to his family. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Please, please get me out of here. So this could be just another little smokescreen for uh, getting Harry home to his, uh, you know, but we'll have to wait and see. But that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. So if we if we read into this a little bit, it says Harry might Harry's right to privacy is on trial today. A conservative think tank is demanding his immigration records be disclosed. Disclosed. Meanwhile, the Department of Homeland Security is fighting back, saying saying the information is protected. So it's starting to already sound wishy washy, and there's like some sort of uh, there's some sort of something else going on in the background. Harry himself is not on trial, but his words are. The Heritage Foundation is concerned that Harry was given special treatment and allowed in the country when, in fact, has used drugs before, as outlined in his book. So there's a catch-22 there. So I think uh, strings are going to be pulled, and probably Harry will be kidnapped by MI6 and taken home, and 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 that'll be it. And then he'll go live with Uncle Gary and... And maybe, maybe that's what he wants. Maybe that's, maybe, like I said, maybe this is a way for Harry to get home or get away or get his life back because he definitely drank the Kool-Aid, in my opinion, allegedly. <laughs> Cloud Dancer, hi, all. Another restricted message retracted. Wow. Howdy, everyone. Kimberly Brown. I might pass out here before it starts. Okay, well, don't pass out. Oh, let's see. Who do we got here? Purple's Me Pam. Another retracted. What is going on with these retracted? Hmm. Unsussex. Unsuccessful. <laughs> Unsussexful. So much to talk about today, Tom. Don't. Tom won't let us down as usual. That's right. I do my best. Okay, onward to these uh, 
historical historical news articles all over there. There's a whole bunch of them too. I've got I've got lots. All right. Mm. GBN News. Charles Ray has revealed that the Duke of Sussex could face deportation after a court ruling claimed, I don't want him back. <laughs> mm, man, see, that, that's just a... Okay, here it is. It comes as the Duke of Sussex visa was at the center of the court case yesterday as conservative think tankers want Harry's immigration files to be made public. In his memoir, Spares, the Prince 39 admitted to formally taking marijuana, cocaine, and psychedelic mushrooms. Well, in my opinion, allegedly, I think they're still on psychedelic mushrooms because, <laughs> wow, just, just wow. <laughs> I think they took, yeah, they, they probably, uh, yeah, instead of the, the semi-truck full of uh, chicken feet, I think it must have been psychedelic mushrooms because those two are amazing. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, and this one here is great. This one here is great, you guys. This is the New York Post today. Oh, you can see the reflection there. King Charles may use a secret weapon to go sort out Harry and Meghan. You know, when you say secret weapon, a lot of things come to mind. I mean, it could be, I mean, what's he, what, a bear trap? Um, uh, a trebuchet? Yeah, that, that would be good. King Charles to roll out a trebuchet to put Harry and Meghan where they belong. Far away, in my opinion, allegedly. <laughs> in an interview with... Joe Elvin Vine hailed the print the Princess Royal. What? The Princess Royal as to the answer is the royal family's problem, according to the Express. I think we need to send Princess Anne to deal with Harry and Meghan. Because if you got a call from Princess Anne, you'd sit up jolly straight, she declared. The Princess. The Princess Royal is one of the hardest working members of the royal family and is reportedly always had a soft spot for her nephew. Okay, well, you know, I can see that, but I would say that if, uh, allegedly in my opinion, if Charles were to send Anne over there, she'd probably just kick the living shit out of Megan <laughs> all the way up and down her little Montecito chicken farm. <laughs> mm. Mm. And here in the Express UK again, the Express UK. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle rebrand. Rebranding is being rejected by the world. Well, go figure that. I mean, most of these articles that go out here are are paid, and there's a lot of them today. Their rebranding is not working. But all I, all I can say is about the re the rebranding. At least she got one thing right. She changed her last names to she changed her last name to Suck It. I mean Sussex, which is way more appropriate for her and so maybe there will be you know she won't be dragging my family's name through the mud anymore or her little sewer system in Montecito allegedly in my opinion so because that's all that's been happening for years okay hi E. Williamson from Arizona Kimberly good afternoon everybody hello from the UK snowy girl from Australia Seb, Seb soulmate. Hi, love your laugh. Love your laughter. Thank you. All right. Hi, everyone. Da, 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 da. England, England, England. Florida, Elizabeth from Florida. Margaret from the UK. Piper, hello from San Diego. Well, that's really close. Does everybody like my little uh, Montecito chicken princess on her little flying broom? Only thing now is I get, need to get a bunch of her little 
little uh, green winged flying trolls to sit on her broomstick with her, huh? That would be hilarious. You never know what I could come up with. All right. Okay. King to send the secret weapon, the rebranding. Yeah, the rebranding is just all the same crap and a different different envelope as far as I'm concerned. All right. Oh, this one is good. Hold on, where, let me find it here. Sky News Australia. Megan breaks wind. I mean, Megan breaks. Megan. What is it? Megan breaks silent wind. No, no. <laughs> Megan breaks silence after website rebrand. <laughs> We're just going to leave that one alone because we already know there's a foul odor following that around because, you know, that one guy from uh, CoStar Suit said something about a foul odor. So I'm just going to go with that as a, Megan breaks wind. I mean, silence. I mean, when silent wind. I mean, yeah. <laughs> after website rebrand. Because it's all the same crap, literally. Good job. Mm. Oh, what is this one now? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to touch on something that happened the other day when I was at my friend's restaurant. I was sitting there, and we were all sitting there having a good time. And uh, one of the gals behind the counter reached into the tip jar and handed uh, handed me a 20 pound note. Mm hmm. So that was odd. That was odd. So, you know, the 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 first thing I think of when that I that means either I mean, what are the odds of a 20 pound note ending up in my neighborhood, which means it could only mean one thing to me anyway, the, the way I look at it is. You know, somebody's letting me know that they're here, you know, but it goes back to like having to, you know, look over my shoulder with all the threats from the from the Sussex squad and and just, you know, that's something that I guess we always have to live with because, you know, somebody pays them to harass us. So maybe they're sending a message, but really interesting, though, really interesting. Okay. Where are we now? Oh, Kimberly Brown joined for a month. Thank you so much. What is this about Meghan Markle going after? I haven't heard anything about Meghan Markle going after President Trump, but what I did hear, you know, in my opinion, allegedly, the only reason that would happen is because she wants to associate, associate herself with with anybody of any importance, okay, which, which we're not going to do politics because we don't do that here. Um, <clears throat> but Megan is trying to become friends with Taylor Swift. <laughs> like I said, anybody can go online, type that in, and you're just going to be blown away. The articles that, that she pays to put out there make it sound like that she's already best friends and that just because Megan went to her concert, the only reason Megan wants to get close to uh, Taylor Swift, in my opinion, allegedly is just to suck the living life energy out of her. You know, that's, that's what negative narcissistic dark soul people do. They can't survive without positive energy feeding, feeding other people's feeding off of other people's positive energy. They have to suck people into the popcorn machine down to their level and take every little bit of soul and joy out of their life and just to make themselves happy and relevant. So, Taylor, I know you're not listening, Taylor, but if you are, you, you know, run, Taylor, run. <laughs> not a good idea. Kim from... Canada. Kim says, hi, from Canada. I think Megan may leave Harry. Well, you know, I think it's overdue. I thought she was going to leave him a long time ago. But now that it's come down to the wire, and in my opinion, allegedly, I think that's the only thing 
relevant left in her life that she can, you know, Harry's going to look like a dried up prune after, you know, the less the rest of his soul gets sucked out of him, allegedly, in my opinion. But. Oh, Jay, cat lady. Hello, Thomas and your dad. Melissa Crawford, I don't know. Um, YouTube may be experiencing problems because there are a few people out there who don't like these types of channels that speak the truth, tell it how it is. I can only think of one and little flying trolls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, you know, maybe she spent a, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars on hackers this month. Because I know a lot of people on a lot of channels are having a lot of issues because, God forbid, anybody says anything about a swamp donkey. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Smile big. I guess I would make money off my family. Well, you know, I don't make money off my family. I make money myself. So... Um, who knows? I don't know how that is even directed. I guess I would make money off of my family. Hmm. Mellow moods. Dorito taught Megan to never give the milk away for free. I wouldn't even call it milk. I would call it Limburger cheese. <laughs> That's what I would say. <laughs> Oh, Kelly Mohan. Hello from Northern Ireland. Hello, Kelly. How are you? Catherine Steele. Hello from Florida. All right. For 10 years married. Okay. I don't want to rose. She won't leave him. Not before 10 years married. So she can get 50 50. Well, unfortunately, I guess they were married in the UK, so I don't think that their marriage in California, yeah, it would probably fall under UK laws because they were married in the UK, but California, it doesn't matter. You're with somebody for six months and damn, they call it community property. <laughs> All right. Scampy Catherine. Hello, hello, hello. Amanda from Atlanta. Hi. From France. Farm Grizz. Farm Girl. Farm Girl Lizzie from France. Hi. All right. All right. Now, this one's good. I, I have to read this one to you. This one's good here. Do, 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 do. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Let's see. Where did it go? Um, hold on a second. I will find it. Just give me a second here. It's 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 wonderful. Oh, this is all the there's like there's twenty or thirty about Megan just trying to be friends with with Taylor. Um This one particularly is from, where is it? I think it was Skycaster, Stylecaster, totally paid and ridiculous. Inside Meghan Markle's desperate bid to be friends with Taylor Swift. Uh, It says here, Megan invited Taylor Swift to her podcast by sitting down and writing her a handwritten written letter begging her to be on archetypes. She continued to explain that the Duchess wanted people to know she went to the uh, Eras tour when it was in California. Megan attended the Taylor Swift concert in Los Angeles, but she made sure that People Mag Magazine knew that she attended. 
Yeah, because People Magazine, that's 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 one that's one on the payroll also. So the long story short on 20 different articles out there, but Megan is desperately trying to be relevant and like, you know, just she's going to put herself wherever she can in the spotlight to make herself look relevant. It's really sad because she's not. She's relevant, in my opinion, allegedly, of just, you know, being the worst fuck up in history, you know, and just destroying families wherever she goes and destroying people and putting people down until she feels better, allegedly, in my opinion. <clears throat> she did it to my family, the royal family, and she will do it to everybody else. Oh, now I I lost my, my, my little, my little, okay. Okay. I, I'm sorry, guys. I lost my place here. Now, here's another really good paid PR one. Now, people pay to put this kind of crap out because it's all one-sided interviews. It's just, it just makes me kind of sick, but... Meghan and Harry regaining lost popularity, popularity as they embark on a Hollywood comeback. And this is from today. So in the mirror, it's in the mirror. Anybody can look at it. Oh, oh yeah, this, this, this is the good one. Okay. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are regaining their lost popularity as they embark on a Hollywood comeback. An expert. Who is this expert? <laughs> as revealed in an eye-opening analysis. The Duke and Duchess just seemingly went off the grid after they stepped down as senior working royals in 2020 and moved across the pond to the United States. But over the last couple of months, a couple of has been popping up all over the place. Yeah, you could say that again. <laughs> From glamorous galas in Los Angeles to a movie premiere in Jamaica with 17 people at it. Yeah. <laughs> the couple is getting more and more comfortable with being in the spotlight again. <laughs> and now another expert has weighed in in how the couple are developing brand Sussex in a new positive light. You know, I don't think they can uh, rebrand anything in a positive light with their track record. I am sorry, but Megan began easing her way back into the Hollywood scene back in November when she walked into the red carpet of Variety Magazine Gala in Los Angeles. Oh, wait. Yeah, the Variety Magazine one. Is that one, is that one where, where the lady had to push her off the stage, kind of like the gong show? Yeah, I remember that too. That was that was that was good. <laughs> At the time, she even spoke to a reporter on the red the red yeah the reporter that pushed her off the carpet. Uh huh. Get go. Time's up. Let's go. Move on. You know you're irrelevant. Go. What's that smell? Get. <laughs> And that's when she hinted that she has so many exciting things on the slate ready to come out. Oh, Lynn, Lynn Carrot from the Press Box PR has said that following Megan's appearance on the gala last November and her, defi her defiant hint at exciting things on, on the way, it sounds as if they were focusing on building their brand in 2024. What is their brand? It's it. What, what what's the brand? What eighty seven uh, social media accounts where it's all about what what wrinkled clothes Megan wore that were donated to her. I mean, come on. She should start her own brand line of iron and ironing boards and deodorant. But ill. <laughs> <coughs> And the Hollywood guru went <laughs> guru went on 
It has also been claimed that the couple are planning on moving from their Montecito mansion to L.A. to be closer to Hollywood. I got something to say about Hollywood. Nothing that the couple's popularity is nothing that the couple's popularity is back on the up and they've had lots of work offers on the table. Yeah, I guess when life, I, I, I guess when it comes down to it, all you really have left is a lemonade podcast. <laughs> I, from one of my uh, great viewers also said that uh, they live in that town in Michigan where, where the lemonade podcast is done. And apparently it's open to the public and just about anybody can go there and talk if they got if they want something to talk about. So good job. Lemonade podcast. Not that I, I've never even heard of them. I, I, I've never listened to them, so I wouldn't know. But I guess I am going to have to tune in when when Megan when Megan suck it sucks sucks it. I mean Sussex gets gets in there and starts talking. Yeah, I don't know, but it's going to be funny. I will be sure to watch. I will be sure to record. Okay. Yes. Oh, that was a good one. Okay. I did lose my place and I'm so sorry because I had all this, I had all this planned out so well. Sorry. <laughs> I guess that's what happens though when you go live. Somebody sent me a really interesting picture and it's kind of blurry. It says Megan hates kids, doesn't she? No wonder she wanted a I don't even know where this came from, but it's, but man, she has got, that's my son there. And she's looking at him like she wants to hit him on the head with something. Look at that look on her face. I mean, does she look pissed off and not happy at all? Dark glaring eyes. She's still got that famous dark glaring. I'm really unhappy. Look, wow. I don't even know. Yeah. I have to look to look into that picture, but that's, that's a creepy one. All right. Here is the one I really wanted to get down to the nitty gritty on. Where is, let me find it out. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm being really unprofessional right now. Well, let's get to, get to a couple of little hellos and comments here. Purple Pam, congratulations. Hi, Thomas, Darcy. Hi, Darcy Miller. Hi. Hello, Thomas and the friends. Hi, Gina. Angie Nelson. Hi, Tom. You're looking good. Thank you. All right. Kimberly Brown, Greg, did another Prince Harry joke Friday night. Amanda Richards, Boats and Hose t-shirt. Yeah, it reminds me of a family member. <laughs> uh -huh. mm. Where would they go? Where, where would they, you know, where would they go if they got deported? I don't know. Marie Farmer, hi Thomas, how's Rachel doing? Say hi to say hi to her from me. Rachel, yeah. Oh yeah, should I should I uh, should I have a pretend phone call from from Megan from my super special prop phone that I have? Julianne Lewis, everyone thinks they should get, get a refund for buying his book. Yep. 
D D program Kate G D program Harry Operation D program Harry. I made some jokes about that earlier. I was going to do like my own little movie, Saving Private Harry. <laughs> I honestly do think. I mean, I honestly do think that's probably a very very big possibility that uh, this whole deportation thing is a roundabout secret way to get Harry out of there. Because I, I, Harry has not smiled in a picture in how many years? Ever. It's he's unhappy. All right. I have to find this one. Oh, I here I can find it. Give me one second, guys. It was a good one, and I actually wrote it down, but I lost it. I lost it in my latest little shuffle. Anyway, all on, these are like all today and an hour ago. Some are paid, some are not. Oh, hello, magazine. This this one's kind of funny too. Meghan Markle is gorgeous in stunning new photo as she celebrates cause close to her heart. What could, should we look at that one? Because you know, hello, Meg is like the the people one, uh, the GOTV, all the paid ones that that you can just call up and pay them money and tell them to say nice things about you. That's kind of sad when you have to pay a news outlet to say nice things about you. I mean, does it get any better than that? It's like you're getting torn apart in the press. The whole world knows what kind of a person you really are. So what? You, you just have to pay with other people's money to these news outlets to say nice things about you, allegedly, in my opinion. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is this this is uh this is from yesterday. Meghan Markle is gorgeous and stunning new photo as she celebrates cause close to her heart. Wonder what that cause is. Definitely not her dad. Nothing's close to her heart except for uh hell. Yeah. Hell. Yeah, hell. Yeah. Where it's dark, dank, evil. Rotten smell. Yeah. Mm hmm. There we go. There we go. What is this? You know, just, oh, God. Now, this may be a joke on Megan because. <laughs> They said, they said some stunning photos. This is, uh, oh, this is Black History Month is a cause close to Megan's heart. Okay. But now it, it says that she showcased some very, very stunning outfits. You guys want to see this like stunning outfit? Now that's pretty stunning if you ask me. <laughs> yeah, if you're trying never, ever, ever to get picked up or looked at by anybody, that's what you would wear, in my opinion. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's go back because there's the one I'm in particular looking for. We are ending a new era of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. That's Vogue. That's paid for. Vanity Fair is paid for. Meghan Markle sports Prince Harry's signature accessory line. Meghan Markle's comeback is stalling. 
Newsweek, Meghan Markle's comeback is stalling. Well, you know, get used to that. Ah, uh, here it is. All right. GOTV. Meghan Markle snubs father, Thomas Markle, with latest move. Okay. So, GOTV is 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 in my opinion paid. Also, this is where this is where when you want to make yourself look better, you call them up and you pay them money, and they'll say nice things about you, whatever you tell them to say. So, this one here, they they put this out, and this was uh, February twenty fifth. So this is today, GOTV, right there. Meghan Markle snubs Father Thomas. You know, she just can't get enough of hurting my dad. Megan cannot get enough of just being an asshole to my dad. I mean, what is it with this woman? First, you lost him. You know, you, you pretended like he was dead. You know, you, you didn't stop what you're doing and go see him when he had a heart attack before your wedding. I mean, you didn't come see him after a stroke. You went and took fake, you know, publicity photos at a Vall day. God rest those children's souls. And that's a horrible thing that happened out there. But you went off there. To, you, you, you go to try and make yourself look better and profit while your dad's laying in a hospital bed? Who does that? Let me guess. See, that's another T-shirt. Who does that? Meghan Markle does. Duchess of Sussex, Meghan Markle, has seemingly snubbed her estranged father. And see, she still calls him estranged, okay? She made him estranged, okay? But see, ah, oh man, Thomas Markle as Prince Harry launched their new website. See, this, this is all like propaganda PR shit that they pay to put out there. Snubs her father, Thomas Markle, as they launched their new website. What else could it be, right? The royal couple launched a new website replacing replacing it with their Archwell Foundation site recently. Megan yet again has seemingly dropped her family Thomas Markle surname. Well, this could be good now. <laughs> she does not use Markle apparently anywhere on the website. Well, thank God for that. I mean, like I said before, Megan sucks it. I mean, Sussex is is a much better last name. It's more appropriate for her. Yeah. Even in her profile about her description, she does not use Markle or the family surname. The about section reads the office of Prince Harry and Megan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, is shaping the future through business and philanthropy. <laughs> Philanthropy. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow, the wisdom that comes out of that woman's mouth. Woo-hoo, yeah. The about section reads, the, uh, da, 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 yeah, through your business philanthropy, the profile section reads, born and raised in Southern California, Megan attended Los Angeles-based all-girls Catholic school, Immaculate Heart. She said something true. Wow. However, Megan continues to use the royal title of Duchess of Sussex, which she's not. Damn. You know, it's just like, get over yourself. The profile further reads, in 2018, Megan married Prince Harry, becoming the Duchess of Sussex. According to Vogue, of course, yeah, another paid, another paid one. Uh, Megan first dropped using her last name publicly when she and Harry launched their Archwell Foundation website. No, Megan still uses Markle all over the place. Go to Instagram. You're going to see Markle this, Markle that, Sussex, Markle. Eh. Drop if you're going to drop the name, Megan. Drop it across the board, please. You know, go back to Ragland. Change all your social media things to Ragland. All right. Then, you know, then this won't be another lie. This won't be another lie that just came out of your mouth. Hmm. 
Anyway, that's just uh so she's just never gonna stop taking hits. She's never gonna start, you know. Okay, oh see now here this goes on to tell some more lies to make uh Megan look good. Here we go. Uh the report claimed by dropping her family surname was spotted on the description of Archwell Audio, which is the podcast launched by her and Prince Harry and Spotify. The about section of the podcast reads Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex and Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, present Archwell audio only on Spotify follows for updates. Meghan and her father became estranged in 2018, days before the wedding to Prince Harry. Thomas Markle allegedly staged paparazzi photos with a Brit British tabloid, according to the Duchess. OK, so that's bullshit right there. 100 percent bullshit paid crap because that's not what happened megan was set megan set my dad up with uh coleman rayner that little weasel in my opinion allegedly that promised to make my dad look good to better his image for uh for the wedding but what did he do purposely there there's um i want everybody to look this up because this is this is i'm going to get into this big time in the next couple weeks because uh, payback's a bitch, everybody. You know who you are. <clears throat> but there's an article out there by the Daily Beast called, uh, what is it? Uh, Ruthless Paparazzi. And it's all about Coleman Rayner um, and the stage paparazzi photos that they took of my dad purposely to make him look bad. And I wonder who... Wow, Coleman Rayner and all oh man, I think you know they've been they've been up Megan's ass since day one. So everybody look into that because that's gonna be a whole subject coming up. If I had a picture of I, I had millions of pictures of it, but everybody can go Google this. And I want to I want people to, to Google this and put it all over social media as much as possible because Coleman Rayner hates that article because it's true. Coleman Rayner. Oh, wait, hold on. This is what, uh, we're going to do it like this. Daily Beast article, Ruthless Paparazzi. All right. The Daily Beast inside Coleman Rayner, the Ruthless Paparazzi, the first one that comes up. I want everybody just to see exactly what this looks like. Okay. That's exactly what that looks like. And this, this is all about, this is all about somebody being paid to make my dad look like an idiot. And then they want to turn it around and, and make it look like my dad's fault, like he did it on purpose. Horseshit. As a matter of fact, you know, this comes down to my dad's um, um, Coleman Rayner. My dad did an interview for Channel 7. This is another, this is another one I want people to look up and, and really look into because it's hilarious. Now, my dad went after it and, and tried to sue Coleman Rayner, but unfortunately, dad's health was not good and it took a turn for the worst and he couldn't follow through and and um then he had the stroke and i tried to catch it in the, in in the nick of time but basically you know when when people are in each other's pockets in the court system and you got dirty lawyer, lawyers and dirty people still doing dirty things this is what happens you know and i couldn't save it in time and i couldn't go hire you know a fancy fancy lawyer to go destroy him. But Channel 7 did. Channel 7 Australia shut him down and basically said that Jeff Rayner uh, did exactly that. He he purposely made my dad look bad in those photos. And the judge even said that he would, that that's the kind of person he, he is and he would do it to other people. So let's look that one up. 
Channel 7 wins Jeff Rayner's. Hold on. See, I'm just Googling this like anybody else can do. Oh, except for that. <laughs> Channel 7 Australia wins lawsuit against Coleman Rayner. It's under something else. Channel 7 wins lawsuit against Jeff Rayner. Did they, you know, I, I, I actually have it because I, I, I have it on my phone, but it looks like it's been taken out because it probably makes somebody a little sore. <laughs> anyway, Channel 7, my dad said in an interview with Channel 7, um, the producers told him that he had full reign, he could say what he wants, and no holds barred, right? So dad talked about the lawsuit on his interview with Channel 7, and uh, what was it? Uh, and Jeff Rayner got his uh, panties in, all bunched up, and decided to go after and sue channel seven and ended up losing because everything that they presented and, and channel seven and their attorneys did all the fact checking and everything. And they determined that. So Jeff Rayner lost. Yep. Because all the documentation and everything. And then my dad being ill and not being able to follow through and then not being able to speak correctly because of the, the stroke. It was just, it was just really unfortunate that my father didn't have the resources to hire a really good attorney. Um, just, just, just to, you know, put people like that in their place because they deserve it. So, but everybody look, look that up. All right. Look up the ruthless paparazzi from the daily beast. <clears throat> And then look into the Channel 7 defamation suit that uh, Rainer lost because, yeah, the judge even saw it like that. No, I can see that you're, you're, you're that type of a person is pretty much what it says. So, but then you'll get, you'll get, um, you'll get a better understanding once you read that, once you read that article about how Rainer came here and, and my God, you know, it's just, you just, you throw people under the bus for your stupid pictures because you're like, you claim to be like the best and the sneakiest little shit paparazzi in the world. Psh, really, really rude what you do to people, allegedly, in my opinion, you know, and, and I'm no stranger to it because I've had it done to me too. And they'll take your picture and they write the worst stories around it to make you look as worse as possible. So I'm definitely, definitely no stranger to it. <sighs> Takes all kinds, man. But everybody have a look at that later at your leisure or whatever. And let me know, let, let me know your feelings on that. Okay, Patty Ann. Hello, Patty. Thank you so much. You are awesome, awesome, awesome. Patty's comment. Funny how the Paps always find out which parking lot Megan is working in. Oh, did I say I meant walking <laughs> or is hanging out in at the time? Yes. Because <laughs> I, I just go back to that parking lot scene from 90210. Yeah. Sorry. In the car. Yeah. Allegedly, in my opinion. <laughs> Kathleen Cooney. Thank you so much. Awesome. You are my fan. Number one, yes, always. You guys are great. Royal Whispers, there she is. Hi, Tom. Coffee date soon? Who are you? <laughs> is there a coffee shop near me? Mm. Anyway, it's, it's just incredible, you know, the... Uh, a lot of people, you know, claim that, you know, uh, you know, I'm such a dirt bag because, you know, I'm riding on my sister's coattails and la 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 doing this, doing that. But a lot of people don't believe because they don't they 
they will never ever be in the situation that I'm in or my family's in because you can't, you can't even imagine what it's like. All you can do is just sit there and cash your $15 check every month for saying bad shit about my family. <laughs> and you have no idea. You have no idea what it's like. You go from a private citizen to having your whole life exposed right there. And when somebody wants to target you and put out bad press about you, they just do it. And I don't have the resources to, to call up the Daily Mail and and pay for them to put an article out about anybody, you know, that, that, that costs some money. So it just, uh, it's never ending. That was the point I was trying to make, but I definitely want people because we're on one of my next upcoming shows, we're going to dissect that entire article, the, the paparazzi, the ruthless paparazzi, Coleman Rainer. That's right. We're going to dissect it. Because we were on the shit stick, shit end of the stick of that, and my dad was, and so we're gonna get down to it, and then we're gonna look into. Uh, I know I have the, or I I have it. So if it's not on the internet, it wouldn't, wouldn't, would not, it would not surprise me one bit if if somebody had it removed. You know, it just even goes into the ridiculous. I think we'll do. I, you know what? We're going to leave that for a different day. We're going to leave. We're going to leave that for a different day. But you're going to mark that on your calendars because. So. Yeah, Wednesday, next Wednesday, let's do. We're going to do Coleman Rayner. Ruthless paparazzi. And then maybe on Thursday or Friday, we're going to get into, uh, we're going to get into Tom Bauer's book and, and the fact that, uh, the fact that Jeff Rayner put a restraining order against my father because of what he said in the book. Now, obviously, there were some issues between Jeff Rayner and my father because Jeff Rayner made my dad look like look as worse as possible as he could, you know, and bragged about trying to deroyal the, the royal wedding in his article, in the article. It's amazing. So we're going to dig deep into that. And then we're also going to dig deep into uh, the restraining order that Jeff filed against my father and lied on court documents and got away with it. And I'm still trying to deal with that right now. It's just like, what is going on here? I mean, you cannot, from, from what I understand, it is a felony to lie on a court document. Jeff Rayner, I'm going to show everybody. I'm going to show everybody. I'm going to bring the documents. We're going to go through. We're going to look at it one by one. The court documents where he got a restraining order granted by lying about my father using a gun. True. So we're going to get into that. And I hope you're watching Jeff Rayner because you're getting exposed, buddy. Because if I can't get it one way, I'm going to get it the other way. So the truth will be known. So, and it's just, it's just never ending, you know, but nobody cares. Nobody cares, but I do, you know, and what you do to my father and what you, you know, lie. Why do people lie so much? Man, <laughs> it's just amazing. But we're going to get, I promise we're going to cover those. They're going to be fantastic, informative, truth, 100% true shows, because you can't make that shit up. You can't lie about it, but some people can on court documents. <laughs> it's coming, boy. Oh, it's coming. The truth will be known. Tammy Linkletter. Good afternoon. Maine here. Hey, how are you? Totally enjoy your videos. I want chick magnet, baby. Okay, I know. I, thank you so much. I 
I explained that the other day. Um, it's just been hard, okay? Because I, expl I explained my housing situation right now and I'm staying in this beautiful, fantastic, lovely house for free, uh, like a barter system, not, not free, it's a barter system. I'm fixing and repairing the sliding doors and stuff like that, so. And great, great, awesome people, so. But sometimes I feel like I'm squatting and sometimes I feel like, you know, I just get unscheduled visitors at any time and it just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. And then there's probably a ghost here too. And now there's pretty much a ghost here, like way downstairs at nighttime, shit moving around down there. So I can't really get it. I can, but I can't. I can't get into my my personal. I, I, I'll do some videos. I promise I'll, I'll get a video done because Chick Magnet misses everybody also. So but thanks for the awesome comment. Thank you for the tip. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it, it is funny how the paps find out exactly which parking lot she's working in. Um, I just can't help myself. <laughs> um, but there was another special paparazzi out there and he knows who he is and he actually uh this guy just doesn't learn i mean carl larson you are not my friend you're not my father's friend you're not my father's best friend carl larson goes way back when i was doing some uh, stuff on the royal bass and uh recalled him out because he he was harassing and to the point to where almost had to get a restraining order against Carl because the Royal tour that he was going to start, he was advertising a Royal tour to where he's going to take people to Montecito and show them Megan and Harry's chicken farm. And then he was going to bring them down here to have tea and biscuits with my dad. advertising this online right so we you know i know he sent me a message yesterday tom i enjoy your lives and then he wanted he out of the first phone call in months right and i just i'll show you i'll show you the text just because i i say it how it is here and that's the only way to say it is how it is i just you know i literally had to damn near threaten carl to leave me alone and to leave my dad alone every single freaking day. Oh, dude, let's do another show. You know, you're my best friend. You're my only friend. You're my best friend. You're oh, please. Uh -huh. Carl, it's no secret. You're on Megan's payroll. You're always there to take your picture. You, it's just like you, you were bragging about, about being like the conduit the conduit of communication for the Markle family who comes up with that shit and anyway but it just surprised me yesterday because Carl sent me a text which I'm going to show you guys because the, I'm the, the nice guy that I am hi Carl I know you like my shows mm, mm. but okay this is the text from Carl yesterday, just out of the blue. Last time I talked to Carl was Tuesday, September 26th was the last, where, where, or the last thing that I didn't respond to from, he texted me, you did a great job on Popcorn Palace. <laughs> okay, yesterday. Hey Tom, I love your live streams. Can you please tell me the do domain names that Megan registered before she met Prince Harry? This is an amazing point that I've never heard or before. Is this really true? I'd like to do a story on it. Please give me a list of the domain, domain names that Megan registered before she met Prince Harry. So this is what I responded back. Now I'm just going to show you. What does that say? 
The only one that I can think of is www.gofuckyourself.com. That's what I responded to him. <laughs> so anyway, but, you know, Carl takes that as like communication, you know, it's just like the added stress and bullshit that he was pressuring my dad into continually doing shows and, and, and just, he, Carl did some really shady shit when my dad was in the hospital and I'll never, ever forgive you for that, Carl. I know you're watching too. Never going to forgive you for that. It's the lowest bullshit I've ever seen in my life, you know? And I don't need to go in that, go into that again, do I? Or do I? Do I? You know? Ah, yeah. Let's try and get in somebody's house while they're laying in the hospital. Bad, bad, bad. So, no, leave my father alone again. Don't text me. Don't text my father. You're not my friend. You're not my dad's friend. And go do your own stories with Megan. Go have, ask Megan, you know, since you're up her ass anyway, go ask Megan what she filed or look it up. It's, it's probably free information to what she, you don't need to talk to me and you don't need to bait me so you can get a story. So move on, Carl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great, great podcast, Carl. Uh, perfect friendship. Yeah. All right. Megan, precious De Beer. Megan is off her rocker. I love your live stream, Thomas. Thank you so much. You are awesome. I appreciate it. The tip jar is flowing. Yes, the tip jar is flowing. Ah. Uh, you know, do you know how, how bad at computers I am? This is, this is sad. I, I, when I first set this channel up, I put a little buy me a coffee thing on there, right? Which uh, people have donated to the buy me a coffee thing, but I don't know where it is. I don't know where it goes. I don't know how to get to it. I can't get a call back. So now I'm going to have to have my little computer hacking friend, uh, dig into that for me and fix that problem. But it's, it's just it's frustrating but this one here is set up correctly because of the the memberships and the chats and stuff like that through the live so this this one's okay i messed up my message purples me pam i messed up my message uh -huh. rusty mouse message retracted why is that well keeps on like writing messages and then retracting them you're not going to offend me nobody's going to offend me Shelly Green. Hi, Thomas from London, Ontario, Canada. Hi, how are you? Cherish Roosh, Susan, exactly. Okay. Jerry. Dior allegedly offered the Prince of Heels a lucrative contract, but he demanded they sign... <laughs> so they moved on. Hmm. Why is the Prince of Heels? Am I missing something here? W would that be the the floor rising shoes that he, that he wore for the so he could so he could gaze directly into John Travolta's eyes eye to eye level and beg John to dance with his wife, just like Diana in 1984 at the White House when Travolta danced with Diana. There's some creepy shit going on in the background there. Creepy shit. I mean, just weird. It's just weird. Jade Bell, very much so refunds all around. Teach them a lesson about lying. Yes. Well, did he lie or did he lie? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We're going to find out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see what happens with the with the so-called visa and deportation. Like I said, Harry, you could come hide down here in Mexico. I offered that to you years ago when, when you looked so unhappy in all your pictures and I, you probably wanted to get away from your, from your wife for a while, but man, we could have hung out. We could have had a good time. You know, you would have been safe. But now if you come down here, you know, 
the U.S. won't be able to find you down here. You know, and I won't give you up unless somebody pays me a bunch of money. <laughs> me, just me. Hello, everybody. Hi, Thomas. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. Yes, yes, we are so far. Yes. Thank you so much. Sharon Coran. Harry didn't realize marriage to Megan was life imprisonment. Harry and Megan don't realize that if they go back to the UK, they will be living in the tower for the rest of their lives. Andy Nelson. Yes. Boats and hose. Yes. I don't know. This is just relevant for some reason. How does that ring a bell? Boats and hose. I should get one made that says yachts and hose. Right? Right? Yeah, I should do that. Yeah. But Step Brothers, Step Brothers was a fantastic movie. Fantastic. Just, 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 I mean, I love, I love great funny movies. I just do. It's just Step Brothers was very, very good. All right. Who do we got here? Let's see, where is it? Please. They're coming on. All right. Anders Dottier. Anders Dottier. Thomas, do you think your sister has children and are they living with her in the surrogates or the surrogates mom? I don't know, but I think I think the shit's gonna hit the fan this year on on, on the kids, on the kid issue. Um I've said it before, allegedly, in my opinion, I think she's too vain to carry children. I don't think that she, that she, in my opinion, right? Because everybody has the right to say their opinion. So um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Um, and when that comes out, oh, that's the last nail in the coffin there, people. That's it. Yeah. She can't recover. They can't recover from the damage that they've done to the royal family or my family. You know, short of like begging and pleading with the fake tears rolling down both eyes at the same time to a public apology. It's going to take a long, long time for. But if something happens and the kids did not, she didn't give birth to those kids. Oh. And then Harry went along with it, allegedly. I mean, at some point, Harry's got to be like laying in bed. And I mean, is it possible that she allegedly could have worn a moon bump while she was sleeping? I mean, who knows? I don't know. Nobody knows. To be a fly on the wall in the chicken mansion. Wow. <laughs> All right. All righty. Love the chicken and the broom in the background, Robert Smith. Welcome. This is not just a chicken. This is this is the uh, the caretaker of the Montecito Rescue Chicken Mansion. It's Princess Me. <laughs> you know, see. In. Oh, she lost her squeaker. But typical, she's got her little tiara right here. She's got her little uh, princess wand. And she's got her little princess little broom that carries all her little flying little trolls with green wings. That's what that is. Oh, and I wonder what this is. What is that? She used to be on um, in the background on my other shows when I was using uh, that bar on her little stripper pole yeah same same person yeah i'm just gonna have to go out and find myself a plastic swamp donkey <laughs> yes people like subscribe call your friends um tell everybody i love them bees knees chicken feet you can say that again. <laughs> yeah. Chicken raptor claws. I should write a song, Hammer Toes. I think I did that. 
I think I, I think I used a little bit of uh, MC Hammer's video one time in one of my videos on Instagram. Can't touch us. Do, 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 do. Hammer toes. Do, do, do. <laughs> Hammer toes. <laughs> oh, who comes up with this stuff? I don't know. I can't be held responsible. There's a disclaimer. <laughs> and it's for entertainment purposes only. Okay. Okay, Margaret, the way those two are going, they will need a room on that broom. Wait a second. Room on the broom or womb on the broom? <laughs> All right, Jade Bell, he'll get an award and world record for the most refunds given on his fraudulent book. You just never know. And then, you know, always, always, always in the background, a threat of another book coming out. I thought by now I would have more than 700 people watching. Carl, don't cry. I'm sorry, Carl, if I hurt your feelings, but don't cry. I'm sure there's another famous celebrity out there you could become best friends with, all right? Sorry, buddy. Captain Obvious, member for one month. Oh, thank you so much. You, you know what? I promise I'm going to keep this show going. You can just tell your friends, tell your friends, sign up, become a member for a month. I love everything about it. And, and it's, it's these lives that I'm really starting to really like because I think the interaction with everybody in the comments and the questions I think we could have something here. We could have a long, long, long running podcast, you know, and I'll just call mine like uh, not lemonade, but I'll call mine like beer aid. How about that? That would be funny. Thank you uh, for joining Captain Obvious. Thank you. One month. You got it. Thank you so much. KLG Armstrong's. Wow. Awesome. Thank you so much. That's a great tip. Love it when that tip jar goes ding. I don't even have my sound on right now for the ding tip jars, but thank you. You guys are awesome. I really, 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 really love that. Who else do we got here? Let's get to some of these questions now. Okay. Mickey Barker, Megan is American. Yes, she is. She is not 41% Nigerian. Maybe she is. I don't know, but she's not. Um, if you... Google Megan on Wikipedia it says that she's from Scottish descent. Well, I don't know any Scots, and I mean, I, I, I am sorry, I don't do Scottish and Irish and English descent like, like, the real Markles are. But, but then she, I think there was something out there where she's forty-one percent Nigerian and sixty-two percent Jamaican, which really pissed my dad off because that really just that got dad mad because all that money he wasted on, on that education and she can't even do the arithmetic. <laughs> so Michelle MM. Well, hello, Tom and all from Michelle, all the way from Preston, North Wales in the UK. Hi, Michelle. Thank you for joining in. I don't think anything will straighten Harry and Megan out. Darcy Miller. I don't think anything will straighten Megan and Harry out. I don't think so either. I think a good, good swift kick in the ass and some soul searching and some intense electrotherapy for, <laughs> for electronic shock therapy might work, in my opinion, allegedly. <laughs> oh, God. Montana, you know, I don't want to do politics here. I just don't do politics. But it wouldn't surprise me if Meg wanted to sue Trump because he hurt her feelings. Well, I think if anybody looks at Meg in the wrong way, her feelings get hurt. I, it's allegedly, in my opinion. I mean, how many pictures are out there when the paparazzi actually catch that right picture where Megan does the, 
the stair. You know, everybody knows what the stair is. So, all right. Mm -hmm. Asia save horses. The princess royal was almost kidnapped. Her bodyguard shot in front of her, and she was feisty. She still was feisty. I don't know. I, I don't know what that is. Sorry. <coughs> Adelina Rose, anywhere they go, they will make trouble. Um, Dawn from Chicago. You know, I used to live in Chicago. Dawn, Dawn Bonami, I am late. 1 10 p.m. in Chicago. Yes, it is. Let's see. Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Uh, so we lived on Granville Street. First, Our first house in, in, in Chicago was on Sheridan, not too far from downtown. And we had like, it was like, now that I look back at like architecture and stuff, uh, I can appreciate fine art architecture. We lived in a in an apartment building, but the apartments were massive. They were like the size of houses. Super long, long wood hallways, wood floor hallways. Um, and they had those like, you know, the little uh, windows that were like the curved radius outside windows, like like little nooks, like window nooks that you could sit in and look out the windows. But it was right down. It was right down the street from downtown, where all the buildings are, um, close to uh, close to the lake, Lakeshore Drive. Um, and then my dad, my dad, um, what did he do? He he won a timeshare. I think is the story of in one of the high rises that was really really close to the Chicago Tower, and it was it was a high rise building and you could almost, you could look straight across to the Chicago towers, the, the Chicago towers with the two antennas and the X's on the side. And I'll never forget that apartment building because Chicago is famous for its lightning. And that's, that's why I like lightning and thunder so much, but Chicago towers, the big giant plate glass windows and the lightning storms, you could see lightning hit, hitting the Chicago towers and the thunder. It was just incredible, but Chicago is a pretty cool place except for the weather. I don't do cold anymore. Sorry. But, but thank you for joining in in Chicago. All right. Kate G, she rescues chickens, but is famous for roast chickens. Do we have a catch 22 here? Harry, can you go rescue some more chickens? Oprah's coming over for roast chicken tonight. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I, I'll allegedly in my opinion. <laughs> Audrey Jensen. Oh, did Meg fly in to see me? Not that I know of, but the Montecito Chicken Mansion Princess did, if that helps. Montecito Chicken Mansion Princess. Yes, that's doable. Okay, Karen went back to whining again. Well, I don't know what that means, Ruth. I agree, Princess Anne, she'd kick, but yes, Princess Anne would kick some serious ass. Purples me, Pam, please send Princess Anne. She will not take any bullshit. Yes. Piper. Montecito Chicken Farm. Laugh out loud. Pay good money to see Ann kick the shit out of Megan. Woohoo! Here we go. Pay per view. <laughs> Just me. King Charles is going to make her. Has another appointed clowns for Virgin Islands where they will disappear into nothingness like Edward and Wallace. There's Christian. Hi. Hi, Kristen. How are you? Good to see you again. Nellie Dean, she never been a Sussex, I don't think. I messed up with the only ops. Farm girls lead. Uh, I think I either need to clean my screen or blow it up. Yeah, that's an opera. 
shit that they put on TV nowadays. Arm girlies. This makes and has soap opera is well better than the shit they put on TV nowadays. You can say that again. That's why I'm starting right now the longest running podcast in history. It's just going to go and go and go and go. All right. Let's try and catch up some of these comments, questions. <clears throat> uh, something's trying to get me. You know what I found out that's kind of like kind of nasty about uh, about the polluted water here is Imperial Beach, which is right across the border. You could almost you could almost see it from here. They were complaining because people were getting sick because of the air, airborne contaminants and bacteria in the ocean in the ocean mist and breeze. So got to be careful. All right, Dennis King. Good morning, San Diego. Hello from Germany. Hi, Brett. Florida. Hello, Dublin Island and Finola. Thank you, Mickey. Mickey Parker from Alaska. Piper. The broom. The broom. <laughs> That's right, Catherine Steele. If she hates her family so much, why did why did does she use the name Markle? Because she, 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 I don't know. I mean, you, you ride coattails, you ride coattails. It's man, just ride it till it, you can't ride it no more, till it won't make you another two nickels to rub together. That's right. Sola Sunny from the Netherlands. Hi, Sandy. No. Hi, Tom from Sussex, the true Sussex, UK. Hi, Sandy. Rip T. Thomas. Hope Dan and Samantha are well. Yep, everybody's good. We just need Victoria Moore. Hello from Arizona. Victoria Moore. Oh, that's two Arizona fans now. Samantha McDowell. Hi. Do, do, do. Karen, why am I back at the start of this podcast? I don't know. Where are you? What happened? I don't know. Asia from Australia. Austria. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Jade Bell. It seems Harry is in... A damned if he do, damned if he don't situation with his immigration status. For those joining us late, I'm going to retouch on my opinions, allegedly, about my opinion on this deportation thing. So I just can't shake this feeling that it's that that it's a secret way for Harry to get away. I'm just I just have to go there with that because it sort of makes sense. He is not happy in any pictures for the last years. He has gone along with the biggest grift in U.S. world history. World history. The biggest grift in history he is a part of, allegedly, in my opinion. And that leads us to, like, the sequel of Saving Private Ryan, Saving Private Harry. This could be a master plan somehow that Harry automatically just gets deported. People pull strings in the background. People with money get Harry out of here. Allegedly, in my opinion, that's the way I feel about it. Watch. It's not like I haven't written letters and I've been proven right. I have a pretty good intuition. So <laughs> we'll see about that. But like I said, Harry, you can come on down here to Mexico. No, They won't find you here if immigration comes to get you to deport you and you don't want to go because you have, uh, you have separation anxiety with Megan. Hey, you can come down here and hang out for a bit. You know, worst case scenario, we got to hire a coyote to take you back. <laughs> oh, get you back across the border. Back home to Megzi Poo. <laughs> mm, 
bees knees. I wish I wish HRH Princess Margaret were still around. She would have taught Woko Broco to no fear. Woko Broco. <laughs> Darcy Miller. <sighs> Whoa, God, bees knees. That's a pretty funny one. I'm gonna have. I'm. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to take that saying and probably use that a couple other times. Woko, broko, to no fear. <laughs> okay. Don Don Bonamy, love it. The broom. That's it. How can they rebrand it? Yeah. You know, re. They should remake the Wizard of Oz, starring. Megan and the Flying Little Trolls. That would be good. There you go, Netflix. Hey, every single show I give Netflix a little uh, a little kick in the ass for some good content. <laughs> I don't know what that means, Jul Julianne Lewis. I don't know. And others, buzzwords they use, waffle maker, crocodile, milk, shakes, sling, dragons. I don't know what that means. It keeps restarting on me, too. See, yeah, like I said, I would not be one bit surprised if, if, uh, you know, Megan hired hired hackers. I mean, she's she's hired people to torment my family for years and me, threaten us, um, pays people to troll and attack us. You know, and I wouldn't be one bit surprised. I mean, I it wouldn't be the first time I got hacked into. I've been hacked into um, on somebody claiming to uh, leave my WhatsApp number, claiming to be me. It's just it, you know, so. You could be experienced problems, experiencing problems because of the hackers, the Meghan Markle hackers, allegedly, in my opinion. So I, it, it would not surprise me one bit. Hi, Gloria. Thank you so much. You are awesome. Um, God bless you also. Thank you so much. You are wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. But I'm sorry people are having issues right now with uh, with with the broadcast. I've got... No, I got full service. I got full. I, I mean, I'll have to probably go in and, and change the VPN again, like I do all the time anyway. But could be on YouTube's end, but it could be on um, the Swamp Doggies end. <laughs> oh, man, Annie. Princess Anne is too old to play. Damn, Megan wasn't Epstein. Jerr. Is that uh, darn Megan was an Epstein boat girl just before Harry? Greetings from Holland. Wow, now that's 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 a colorful opinion there. Yeah, that's a that's a good observation. There are pictures. I, th I think there's there's allegedly on the internet. Anybody can go look these up. There's some other pictures on there too. Hi, Brenda. It's Andrea. Tom, do you have plans to visit Toronto? Mary Kennedy, I'm in Arizona. You know, I'm I'm landlocked right now. I'm just, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I took off uh I was down here for a while before dad's stroke. I drove up to Oregon to visit my son and help him with a couple things. But when I got there and then I got the news, I had to come right back. So not gonna do that again. Samantha McDowell, the grift that keeps on grifting. At least they're consistent. Yes. Anna Perkins, smoke screen for something much worse. Opinion, allegedly, legal reasons. Yeah, this whole visa thing, it's a smokescreen. See, I'm not the only one who thinks like this. I mean, I just go with my intuition just to see what's really going on. What's the big picture? And 
in my opinion, allegedly, like I said, MI6 is coming for Harry to rescue him. They're going to take him back because he got deported, allegedly, in my opinion. Uh-huh. Come on. Isn't this visa expired already here? Yeah, it is. <laughs> doesn't have a work visa because he doesn't work. So what's really going on? That's what we want to know. That's what we're going to find out, too. Everything always has a way of working itself out. Oh, Carmen, we got to get some little chickens on that broom. <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. Any watching? 200 likes. 688 watching. We need a lot more likes, a lot more people watching. Oh, so somebody told me that I should take after I do a live after I do a live broadcast, I should just take it down. But why do that? Because you can watch it whenever you want to. That's when I start getting all the views. So, um, so I leave them up there for your viewing pleasure. Okay, let's see. Pen Dragons Den, will you be coming to over to the UK this year? It's it's still always a possibility. Um, like I said, Lady C said that uh, she gave us an invite. Uh, she's going to show us around. The, the invitation is always open. It's just a matter of when and uh, stuff like that. So I, I, I really want to. Cause I like, you know, I like to go see people and I like to make friends wherever I go. So I definitely want to come over and I'll bring chick magnet with me. I'll bring chick magnet on the airplane with me. Um, chick magnet can go to the pubs and we can have beers. It'd be great to go to the UK. It'd be great to go to Australia. Chick magnet would go to Australia and have beers with the Aussies down there. Right. Down under whatever Oz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, a lot of people are having some issues. I hope not too many people are having too many issues with this live stream, live stream right now. Brenda Carter, this is a very good community for support. Tom, you are blessed. Yep, thank you so much. Kathy Johnson, she could have helped with medical bills for dad. Yes, I've always said that. And I'm going to say it again. Connected to my channel, Megan Markle, there is a GoFundMe for dad's medical bills that were not covered when he had a stroke before he, he was missing part of his coverage. So I started that, but I like to rub that in your face, Megan, because not only did you not call, not only did you not come visit, you know, I mean, you smacked Harry in the back of the head to get him to get on an airplane to go visit Charles when Charles became ill and he got the word, but you probably did that for your own special, whatever kind of reasons you got going on up in that, um, little evil factory of yours upstairs, allegedly in my opinion, but nope, not even two nickels, Megan, not even two nickels, not even a phone call, not even a text. So, that's a very, very good highlighted comment there now. Shall I pin that? Yes, I pin that message. Pinned by the real Thomas Markle Jr. and friends, Kathy Johnson. She could have helped with dad's medical bills. Yeah, she could have helped by just keeping her mouth shut and lying and lying about God knows everything. And then telling 50,000 other lies to cover up one lie or two lies. But that's not the way it works with some people. <laughs> All right. What else we got here? Evil knows no boundaries. Dolly Belfour. Evil knows no boundaries. That is true. Audrey Jensen. Yeah, Audrey Jensen, what does it say? 
is, is Rachel Ray, she said she was some percent Malta because Rachel Ray is from Malta. Okay, I, I've heard the Malta one too. You know, at this point in life, there's not too many purebreds left. Everybody's kind of a mutt. So, I mean, but come on, you know, for, for, it's just, I mean, no, I, what, what is she going to be next? What, whatever, whatever popularity leads her to the next race, you know, race literally. Uh, what am I going to be this week? What, how is, how is it going to make, how is it going to personally, uh, uh, make me gain, you know, me gain, make me gain. <laughs> All right. All right. Let me stop this thing here. All right. Doreen. Yeah. That 20 pound note will come in handy when I come to England. That's nice of that person. Well, that was just weird because I, you know, it's, it, it's not, it's because when you get death threats from people and, and people uh, stalking you all the time, and then somebody leaves a 20 pound note in your neighborhood, it's just a red flag to me, but, but that's just the kind of stuff that, uh, that my lovely darling sister has laid out for me. Yeah. Right. Kieran Sherrod. It would be wishful thinking, but such fun if you and your father and sister were invited to Buckingham Palace for tea. Now, that, that that's a good question there. That that's that's a good comment there because that's exactly like if I was King Charles and I wanted a little bit, just a little bit of payback. <laughs> if I was William and if I was William and I wanted a little bit of payback. Ooh, I could get it. I could seriously, seriously get it. Could you imagine like a formal invitation to the palace and then, and then televise it just for Megan and Harry to watch from their lovely little chicken mansion ranch in Montecito. <laughs> oh, look, the Markles are having tea with William and Catherine and King Charles and Camilla. Wouldn't that be just wonderful? Come on. I know, I know, I would bet not only do, does the palace and the staff probably sit around and watch my videos and watch my lives, but, and they probably get a great kick out of it. I know they do. I know they do. They have to. Who, who doesn't get a kick out of it? Oh, I know two people who don't, <laughs> but wouldn't that just be wonderful if, if that happened? Payback, Charles. Payback. Payback. Oh, I just got home from church. I missed lots of Linda Wayne. You just got home from church. You can always watch it again, Linda. Yep. Dan Smith is impossible. Heather Griffin, you and your dad, Smith, are welcome to come to New Zealand. Yeah, that would be that would be nice one of these days to, you know, you know, especially if I had, you know, if I had a couple of fake charities and stuff like that, where I just, you know, pocketed the money myself and I could just go travel all the world in my private jet, you know, and leave my carbon footprint and just do all that. Yeah, that's what I would do, too. Uh huh. Yeah, but. All right. Is it, is it so? If she was a philanthropist, a philanthropist or a humanitarian, it would be easy for her and Harry to help your dad with medical expenses. So much for their compassion. I know. And this is their rebranding. When you go to their... If you want a good laugh, you know, I know everybody said don't go to that website because they fish and they, they, they fish and they get your information. So I'm not going to tell people to go there and check it out because 
if that's what they're doing, you know, who knows? But I looked at it and it's, it's a joke to me, especially because they're still boasting. It's still on there. The African parks. How is that not being dealt with? I would have made that my number one priority immediately. Get your ass down there. Stop kicking those people off their land. Stop trying to force them to go to other schools and learn a trade so you can put them back to work. And stop raping and pillaging and beating the, beating the people on their own land so you can open up a safari park and a big game hunting range. Dude. I'd, I'd get on that if I were you. And that's just allegedly what I what I gathered information online anyway. So, so there you go. But yeah, you got issues, bro. You need to, that would have been my number one priority. Get that off your, get that off your website. And, you know, and don't brag about giving out 2,500 tampons and menstrual products to women and then giving them instructions on how to use it. Yeah. Where does all the money go? <laughs> wow see it's just yeah where does all the money go rebranding what yeah if that happened if uh Jody and Carlson do not record a tea with King Charles. Yeah, that would never happen because that would be done in private. And it's against the law to record somebody and film them without their written consent and knowledge. But some people don't have any morals. Some people like to wear microphones and hid microphones for their personal gain. But... Mm, yeah, Connie McWetter, I would love to see your family with the king. Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be so, that'd be just like, ooh, that'd be just great. Kathy Johnson, Princess Catherine is, is resting, so I reckon she could be watching your channel. Catherine, I, I hope you're doing amazingly wonderful and well, and I, ho I hope you're resting peacefully and just getting some rest and just doing whatever it takes because you are such an awesome person. And if you are watching, hello, uh, big fan. And all right. Ah, Samantha McDowell chick at the palace. <laughs> that would be funny. Chippy at my door. Love your t-shirt, Thomas. Sylvia Murray, your dad and Samantha have, have some good fortune heading your way. Bless each of you. Thank you so much. Uh, Christopher King Charles would make you make you so welcome. Tom. Hey, King Charles would make you so welcome. Precious Devere, King Charles would make us welcome. Yes, that would be awesome. That's just what I would do. I would just, I would just. If I were King Charles and the tables were turned and I had to deal with the dynamic duel like that, I would definitely, ooh, fair game. That would be fair game. A little payback. Here we go. Royal Whispers again. I think you don't say, I think you don't say yes to coffee as you may not like women. That would be sad. Well, you're totally wrong about the women, and I love coffee. I drink a pot of coffee a day in the morning. I think you don't say yes to coffee as you may not like women. Eh, well, you're wrong about that. Uh, that's one thing that uh, I don't love women. Oh, my God. Weakness. <laughs> So you're wrong about that. I think you. I think you just. You just really want to date, but you, you want an internet date. You want to like a private internet date. You want to want to do a Zoom call and have some coffee. Mm -hmm. 
And me behave badly. Okay, Lily Rose. Harry and Megan behave badly because they are both spoiled brats. <laughs> King Charles is too soft, and your dad seemed like he spoiled her rotten too. They created two monsters. Yeah, you know, two, but yeah. My dad looks back now and he goes, maybe I did spoil her too much, but that's, that's, that's something for my dad to answer. Don't mind me. She would drop a load in her wrinkled pants if Tom had tea with the king. Yes, she would. Oh, it's Andrea. Would Megan's book be filed under fiction or nonfiction? I'm going to say fiction. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have been a wonderful audience today. And Royal Whispers, I just don't know what to tell you. You know, it's like, I think you don't say yes to coffee. As you, that's just a weird thing to say. That's just not even, I mean, I love coffee and I love women. What do you, what do you, what do you want from me? I think you just want a date really bad. Mm. Yes, Whistling Dixie bought up a very, very good comment here. Thank you so much for that. As long ass, as long ass Megan, good point, doesn't do good by her dad, everything she touches will fall. It's why nothing goes her way. That's right. It's called karma. And... Karma is eating away at her face and her looks like flesh eating bacteria. So I don't think there's enough Bondo automotive body panel Bondo and spray paint to fix that carcass face any longer because the karma is just eating it from the inside out. So good job with that one, but that's true. You know, All right, where do we go here? So let's see. Here, okay, so, all right, I came up with the solution for, for Royal Whispers. You know, I want you to stand on the street corner <laughs> at Bonito uh Juarez Boulevard right in front of the Rosarito Hotel at at four o'clock Wednesday four o'clock on Tuesday afternoon and I'll do a drive-by <laughs> Jan D yes it's weird stay away yeah all right, Precious Devere, we love you, Thomas. Thomas, Fictioner, Bullocks, Lillian. Bye from San Diego. Bye, Lillian. Thank you so much. Ugly spoil. I think this problem is deep inside. Not trying to be disrespectful, but yes, I something something is not right upstairs in her head to be that evil and shallow and 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 heartless, heartless of a person. To do that to her own family and to do that to her own father. Inexcusable. Even if I was on speaking in terms of her dad, I can't picture her parting with a dime. She appears greedy. Yes, Tammy Linkletter. Yes, let's go. Let's go. Eight questions. Are you no longer a royal mess? Oh, I haven't been on there. I've just been keeping it to myself. S Hicks. I'll probably pop in there here or there or something like that, you know. Michelle MM, Zoom call. Yes, please, Tom. 
and uh, you know, for the late, as always, sometimes, okay. Okay, hold on, try. Mm, okay. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap this up. As promised, on Wednesday, now, Wednesday, I'm going to do Wednesday, 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 we will do Wednesday, 1 p.m. My time will be our next schedule live. And as promised, I will try and definitely do my best to get Chick Magnet's ass out of bed and active again because um, he misses everybody. He told me. And, uh, yeah, so what was that? Uh, Royal Whispers. Me, Chick Magnet will be on the corner. <laughs> anyway, you guys, <laughs> thanks for uh, tuning in, liking, subscribing, uh, joining joining the uh, membership. That's it's a, it's a huge help. It's very difficult to make money on, on YouTube, but, I mean, I don't make very much at all. And, but it, it does help with things. It, it helps with little props, and I do I do buy props and stuff like that. But um, the most important thing is like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Get my subscribers up. I, I need to get a lot more, um, and I'm working on that. I, I have a little guy who knows computers really good. I found him found him here in town. Language barrier, but it's working. I just do translations on the phone he goes in and, he, and what he does in five minutes takes me a month so the bugs are working out bigger better things are coming guaranteed more scheduled shows as soon as i hang up here i'm going to schedule the next one so love you guys i will see you on wednesday have an amazing rest of your weekend